Yesterday, Canon announced the EOS R1, their flagship full-frame mirrorless camera. The same source that provided me with advance notice of the R1 development announcement shared details about the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, giving us high-level capabilities as well as the announcement date. And while Canon rumors previously said that the Canon EOS R5 Mark II would have a 45 megapixel sensor, at the time, they weren't sure if it would be stacked or backside illuminated. And shortly after that post by Canon Rumors, I was able to validate and confirm the sensor type and resolution. The Canon EOS R5 Mark II is indeed going to have a 45 megapixel sensor. It's going to be full frame, it's going to be stacked, it's going to be backside illuminated, and it's going to have a completely new design. This is not just a minor update or an upgrade like redoing the kitchen in your house this is going to be a completely new sensor design and that information i got about that sensor well it's the same source that provided me with information about yesterday's canon EOS r1 development announcement so this source is well a hundred percent they haven't gotten anything wrong and they do provide very detailed information when they do but in this video we're going to talk about some specifications where it's a little bit contextual or conceptual. It's a little bit high level, but let's go ahead and deal with that one specific piece of information I have for you, and it's based on the date. Like the original Canon EOS R5, the Canon EOS R5 Mark II will be announced in July. And if you're counting, that's four years since the Mark I was announced, back on July the 9th of 2020, and it began shipping later that month on July the 30th but I have a sense that we're not going to have to wait until July before we get some sort of idea of the specifications for this camera, and this video is going to help you there. The Canon EOS R5 Mark II is most likely going to get some sort of teaser campaign by Canon. Yesterday, we got a development announcement of the Canon EOS R1, and I didn't get notice of that until about 24 hours ahead of time. But I want to draw your attention back to those two events in Slovenia. I talked about this a couple of days ago. Canon Slovenia has two events, one for May the 15th, and you know what we got yesterday, right? And one on May the 21st. And a lot of people kind of looked at this and thought like, oh, Canon Slovenia is not gonna go ahead and announce anything, and that wasn't the point. What it was is more of an Easter egg is, look, Canon Slovenia, which is part of the Canon family, has an event on the 15th and the 21st. And Canon Rumors has been saying all along that we can expect an announcement of the R1 and the R5 Mark II somewhere between May the 21st and the 23rd. And then they later uh, revised that to the 15th. And I think what, if, if we're going to follow the same logic here, I think signs are pointing towards a possible announcement of the Canon EOS R5 Mark II on the 21st. I don't, this, this is not from any source, this is just looking at the available information. But it's possible. Now, we don't have any scheduled event from Canon, so they might just go ahead and give us a development announcement and then do what they did back in 2020 on the first week of July. Go ahead and do a formal announcement while they've leaked pretty well everything out on the video side before letting it ship towards the end of the month. But now let's turn our attention back to the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. My source referred to the EOS R5 Mark II as, and I quote, a wow camera. And if you're thinking that sounds familiar, well, yes, um, if you'll recall, Olympus, now OM System, used that term for uh, the OM-1 that they're coming out with a WOW camera. But my source has said that the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, think of it as a WOW camera. And that's pretty bold. This, this source hasn't used uh, overstatements in the past. In fact, this is the first time in multiple communications where this source has actually used an adjective like wow. So it's going to be a wow camera. Now I, I wanna, I had another source tell me that the R5 Mark II is going to be a game changer. I didn't publish that information because that source provided me with information about the Canon EOS R1 and it didn't prove to be correct. They seemed to get a couple of things wrong. So I held off on the R5 stuff and I'm not gonna tell you the rest of the things that this source said, but they did say it was gonna be game changer but this other source that calls it the WOW camera, they've been 100% correct on everything so far. I see them as a completely reliable and trusted source. But there's something else that this source told me about this WOW camera. He told me, if you're torn between choosing between the Canon EOS R5 and the Canon EOS R5C today, your decision will get a whole lot easier. 
And what he's alluding to right there, if it's not clear, is that what he's saying is that this new camera, it's going to be much more capable in terms of video specifications. And that's a big deal. We've been frustrated since the R5 came out as video shooters because of that overheating. As a photographer, you probably weren't affected by this. But for video shooters, we could be sh taking photographs at a wedding or an event, shooting for half a day. And then as soon as we switch, switch over to video to get a few shots, guess what? Overheating. Sorry, you have a minute. You have two minutes and that's it. Now, firmware 1.6 on the Canon EOS R5 Mark I more or less solved that. But it was still very frustrating. And what we've started to see is other cameras like the R6 Mark II start to provide other exposure tools. We see Panasonic providing tons of exposure tools in their cameras. But there's a huge potential for Canon to, well, make the R5 Mark II more of a cinema type camera because what he's alluding to here is that the R5 Mark II, you're not gonna see a huge amount of differences between the R5 Mark II and a cinema version of this camera, which has me wondering, is there going to be an R5C Mark II? And I just don't know. But now what I wanna do is I wanna draw your attention to a couple of patent applications on two potential capabilities that I think we could very much see in the R5 Mark II based on what my source has just told me. And I've already covered these in separate videos, which you can find on my channel. Uh, let's go ahead and get right to the first one because a lot of you that like to shoot video are gonna be pretty excited by this. In Canon patent filing JP 2023-160037, Canon solves the problem of how to put ND filters inside the camera. We're not talking about electronic ND filters here. Though the patent artifacts don't really shed much light on what type of camera we could see this technology in as they opted for a rather boxy representation of the camera, as opposed to other patent applications, such as JP 2023-128236, which show a much more detailed design. Technically speaking, it's pretty easy to put ND filters inside a camera because you can go ahead with electronic, and then that way you don't have to worry about any physical filters. But actually putting actual filters inside the camera, that's preferred, but it does take a little bit of extra work. It adds bulk, it adds weight, it adds, well, it takes away from the internals, either empty space to help with heat um, dissipation or for something else, or you just have to make the body a little bit bigger. But this one here, for video shooters, that would be a really big deal. Uh, again, the patent application goes into detail talking about how they solve this problem, but because they don't show really detailed images of like let's say a stills hybrid camera like other patents have. I, I say this one's a definite maybe and who knows, maybe this video will help shake out some more information to see if we will get any sort of ND filters in the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. But now it's time to turn our attention to another patent application, only this one, it's dealing with heat management. Canon patent filing JP 2023-170599 shows us a new thermal architecture, including heat pipes that demonstrate how Canon can remove heat away from the internals of the camera without ruining the weather sealing of the device. And while the artifacts still show a box camera, it does have proportions more akin to the Canon EOS R5 than it does to the Canon EOS R1. And if you do a search on Canon EOS R5 Mark II specifications or specs, you're going to find an awful lot of people talking about the specs coming in the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. But one thing you're not going to see is an awful lot of detail. Uh, Canon Rumors has done a good job of providing us with some leaked specifications. But things such as 8K RAW, yeah, so what? We have that in the R5 Mark I. What about um, codecs? What about frame rates? Same with 4K. We know that the R5 Mark I can do 4K up to 120. What about going beyond that? What about full sensor? What about, again, codecs? What about 1080? We, we, there's an awful lot of information missing. Now, Canon Rumors did say Canon Log 2 and Canon Log 3, but um, we also know that the R5 Mark II is also gonna have a new and improved LCD, a new and improved EVF with a higher resolution. It's gonna be able to do pixel shift like the Mark I, but I suspect it's gonna be a much improved version over the Mark I. And there is one other spec I forgot to mention, and that is what we see in the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, and that's pre-buffer shooting, probably something like a second or a half a second. 
But a lot of these specifications haven't been validated at this point. They're coming from multiple sources and they're just circulating around from different sources. And even we here have parroted those same specifications. So what I'm really trying to do now is focus on what we have as validated from credible known sources and everything I put to you in this video coming from this new source that I just started um, corresponding with this year um, has an excellent track record. So I'm really excited. I personally think 45 megapixels is more than enough for the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. I think it's great in the Mark I. Sure, I would like to see 50, but that really only benefits me if I'm shooting over sample or shooting 8K and I want over sampled 8K for stills. 45 megapixels is more than enough. In fact, most of the times I'm cropping things down. The ISO range, um, the, the dynamic range of this camera, we do know it's going to be improved. But to what degree? A stop better? Well, potentially, because we are getting a whole new processing system. We're going to have a new, well, so if we look at the R1, it had the same image processor, but it got a new AI processing chip that would help process a lot more information. It's getting a new sensor. So I'm really unsure of how the dynamics are going to work in that regard to the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. We did see with the Sony, um, what was it? The A7R5, it got a new AI chip. And then pretty well every other camera after that, it also got that AI chip. So there's a lot of speculation. I'd like to know what you think in the comment section down below. Let's start a discussion with each of us here. Let's see what we can find. Let's see what we can come up with and how close we are. And as my sources provide me with a bit more information, well, we'll be able to validate and give you a much better idea. So by the time we get to July, you're going to know exactly what the Canon EOS R5 Mark II has in terms of specifications and capabilities for not just videographers, but for photographers. It seems that a lot of these leaked specifications, for some reason, seem to focus on the video side. However, um, despite the specifications, I really think that to avoid the fear of missing out, I want to draw your attention to a couple of sales that are going on right now, specifically the Canon EOS R5, the Mark I. Look at this, $28.99. That's an incredible price for that camera, for the capabilities. Just take a look at what other cameras are out there today. You're not going to find many cameras that can do better than that camera, especially at that price. The R5C, $35.99. The R6 Mark II, $19.99. The Z8, $34.96. And honestly, I could go on for about five to 10 minutes. Whether you're buying Canon, whether you're buying Nikon, there's so many de <laughs> deals. There's so many discounts uh, across the line. And if you take a look at the comment section down below, uh, you're going to see I have listed off um, probably 17 or so different cameras from Adorama and B&H. There's an awful lot of deals. Panasonic, not so much on the S5 Mark II and the 2X. There are some sales, but all the other S cameras, they're on special order. So we're expecting something to come out there. Sony, I just checked, not a lot of sales. They had two weeks of sales on and that was it. But there's a lot of sales on. And one thing I do want to be transparent if you do use my affiliate links down below, I get anywhere from 3 to 12% back, which really does help support this channel. And if I could just ask you a favor, if you are looking at buying gear from Adorama or B&H, if you use my links, it'd be much appreciated. And it doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to fill in any more forms. You don't have to put in any codes. You click on the link, it takes you right to the site. You can put it in your cart and check out like you normally would. Um, but you know what you get is a great camera lens or accessory at a great price. And um, you get to support this channel with a small commission that's paid directly from Adorama and B&H or Amazon. And um, it's very much appreciated. So um, thank you to all of you that have used my affiliate links in the past. It's very much appreciated. But now I wanna give you a bit of a, I, I wanna sell you on subscribing and following me on Twitter. Now, for, for my point of view, I don't really care. You'll notice I don't have that in the beginning of the video anymore. Um, if you want to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest, um, subscribe and choose all notifications. Although um, YouTube does a pretty good job that once you watch one video, it'll remind you of others. It just doesn't do it all the time. But you definitely want to follow me on Twitter or X or whatever it's called. I think it's called X now, even though you can go to twitter.com. I'm a little bit confused by that. Anyhow, um, I quite often tweet out stuff that I don't make a video of, or even like yesterday before I published my video at 10 o'clock, I had already tweeted out that the R1 development announcement is confirmed for tomorrow being 
today, which is now the future. Sorry, I'm getting confused with this whole time dilation thing. But essentially, I tweeted things out earlier. So I'm going to tweet out more information about sales, things about firmware updates, minor firmware updates, where I won't do a video and all that stuff. But, you know, knock yourself out. If you don't want to follow me, that's fine. Um, and I'm not going to ask for you to contribute on my Patreon or anything like that. I just want you to be able to enjoy enjoy the content, to be able to participate in the community that I've developed where it's non-toxic, where it's good for all ages. And I keep all my videos rated G because if you're like me, you've got children around the house and um, you like to listen to and watch your camera stuff while things are going on. And um, that's why I keep things G rated. I just, I don't want you to have to worry about who might be in the room. But anyhow, thank you so much for watching right to the end. Have yourself a great day, and uh, we'll likely see you again soon. There's lots of announcements coming up, so there's lots to talk about. Have yourself a great day, and we'll see you again soon.